time starts when the robot begins moving and ends when the robot gets into the square. I uh, found a dead end and turned around. All right. Yeah, that seemed a little odd. <laughs> we were all expecting the left turn or the right turn. There's a couple uh, common ways of doing this, and that is to follow all left turns. And of course, you, you threw out the idea of shooting up a satellite. And, <laughs> and, and actually, that is permissible by the rule. Yeah, I would put a, I would think of parachutes. It's stuck. Clock up. Swarm. All right, so one of, the, one of the neat things about this, since there are three attempts, um, the, what Chris is doing is it's basically taking his first attempt as somewhat of a throwaway. His goal is to explore the maze and find the goal. Yes. And learning the whole thing. Yeah, and when on the second attempt, all right, so you notice he's like doing a little pause there at each intersection. And so it is a male robot. Yes. <laughs> you call it he, so I just want to make sure. Well, I'm at he, Chris. Yep. And that was fast. <laughs> All right. Now let's hear it for that. Let's hear it for that. We're going to wait for a round. 
acceleration time. Uh, it's going to run a left hand, hopefully find the end, do a right hand, hopefully find the end, and then reduce. Okay. So Randy's doing one of the classic maze solving algorithms, and that is he's doing the left hand rule, so notice every time he reaches an intersection, he turns left. If he can. And he will definitely find the end if his robot is able to continually determine which the intersections correctly, follow the line correctly, and uh, he's doing great so far. Uh, In fact, by knowing the left hand rule, anyone here can look at the map and know where it's going to go. There's no right. doubt where it's going to go as long as it's seen the line properly. 99.9% sure. All right. And similarly, you can. So here we're going to go to the end of right hand turn. Next, you can figure figure out when he does his next run exactly which way he's going to go. And then theoretically, you would find uh, the time for the two and pick the short. And all right, very good. All right. Let's go. Taking the long way around the loop. One of the things that is interesting about the classic reduction methods is the classic reduction methods do not remove uh, a loop. So um, yeah, this is you have to do a little bit more advanced uh, mathematics to eliminate these loops. It's very easy to eliminate a dead end because you can realize, oh, that was a dead end, and you can cut that out. So loops are a little bit more difficult to determine. And, uh, in fact, the maze measures can make it much more difficult for someone following either a left or right hand rule to ever finish. So you'll notice this little zigzag down here. If if his robot chooses, it will it will never go down that again. Am I correct, Randy? Uh, I certainly hope. We're, we're <laughs> <right now. laughs> I'm curious as to anyone else done the software yet that will eliminate the loops. I, I've tried. It's hard. It's hard. It's all just ring matching myself and everything. I appreciate it. All right. And now Randy's final run where hopefully his uh, algorithm has reduced to the shortest possible maze. Now does it just check the two and just use whichever is the shortest or is it going to... Uh... No, it, it, it should actually look at the compare the two as a map and, and solve. It should actually reduce. It's going to look for loops as left, left, left. It's going to try to remove that completely and say back that up to the right. Awesome. Okay. Ready? We'll see if it works. Theory it would. Okay, that solving the loops, solving the loops is difficult. Yeah, but really we're going to anticipate that it won't take this dead end. It will go back. Yep. So it's, it's choosing the right hand uh -oh. side. Uh oh. It's uh -oh. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, I think we hit a rip stack here or at stack overflow here. Yeah, it's definitely yeah, it's acting psychotic. Like Unfortunately, it lost the line. Last year proves any indication of this year. Wait a minute. Past performance is not an indicator of future results. But, uh, we're taking a right hand rule for the first run. So, is that what we're doing? Right hand rule here? That's an excellent point that Dale brings up. You'll notice that uh, you know, Randy's system uh, looks like it was reducing everything very well, so one small mistake, and that's the end of uh, solving a maze. 41.94. 41.94. Very good. All right, now we're looking forward to solving from the other direction.
I'm thinking next year when we build a robot with the kids that we'll do a maze. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think, Kate? Do a maze next time? Maybe. Maybe? Okay, maybe not, too, right? And of course, you know, as you notice, we're recording these times because there's always the chance that a robot will make a mistake and not survive its reduction algorithm. All right, here we go. Hopefully, now Polymax 9000 will have memorized and calculated the fastest way through the maze. And so far, no mistakes. Picking out all of the dead ends. Two turns left. Oh! One guy left. Almost perfect. Almost perfect. Someday. Almost perfect. Personally, I think the googly eyes uh, threw it off. I don't know if everybody sees he has googly eyes in the front of that robot. All right. Flood fill, okay. Flood fill algorithm, very good. So the idea of a flood fill algorithm is to completely explore the maze, each divided into squares, and then pretend that from the starting point you started with a giant fire hose, putting lots and lots of water into the maze, and water runs down all the lines, and you can follow the path of the water, the shortest path of the water is the shortest way through the maze. Not an easy method to uh, actually implement the software. It's kind of easy conceptually, but uh, it's a little bit tough uh, in software. So we'll see how this, uh, how Carlos's software goes here. So are you trying to explore the entire maze, Carlos? Yes. So is your software keeping track of every intersection it encounters? It's supposed to. All right. It saw that intersection. I want to mention that Carlos is doing something almost every roboticist does when they're doing their work. He's eating this. Okay? Because we've all been there. Pizza will help the robot go. Yeah, all right. excellent. Turn there, it, it shortened the route from pure left. Yeah, what was our time? 57 seconds. 57 seconds. 17 seconds. Right All right. 18 second improvement. Third round. And so now, what do we think it's going to do now? I think it's going to do what it's doing before. Okay, again, let me change. just remind you what the other way It's not going to change. No, it's found the route it likes. Sometimes I have that way when I'm traveling home. <laughs> I don't take the shortest route. I do get there. But it's what I call my route. Okay. So in fact, this, you know, before uh, we're done on the earth, we will probably see some of this show up in uh, Vehicles that you know, self-driving vehicles. Although I don't think they use that term. <laughs> 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 
in England. <laughs> All right, and next up is going to be beacon finding. Um, so you guys probably by now know the order. Um, and we're done. That uh, for beacon finding? 56 seconds. 56, very good. You want to, yeah. 